right now, under this microscope, billions of microorganisms are locked in an endless war of chemical weapons and tactical strikes. What you're watching isn't just a battle, it's a window into universal patterns that might just explain both how alien life evolves and why we humans haven't found it yet. These bacterial warriors reveal something profound about life itself, patterns that might be universal, whether you're looking at microbes on Earth or civilizations across the galaxy. Erwin Schrodinger, of kitty cat fame, said that life, wherever it exists, faces the same fundamental challenges. It needs to store and transmit information. It must have metabolic cycles to process energy, and it has to fight against entropy. In other words, life uh, finds a way. These aren't just earthly constraints. They're universal laws of physics and chemistry. Even alien life, no matter how exotic, would need to solve these same basic problems. And that's where our little bacterial friends come in. They show us how life, at any scale, deals with these fundamental universal challenges. Forget everything you think you know about bacteria. These aren't simple, slimy organisms. They're sophisticated problem solvers, warriors that have mastered the fundamental challenges of evolution since a few years after the Earth cooled. For decades, we've been asking Enrico Fermi's famous question. If life in the universe is abundant, where is everybody? Before we tackle that problem, let's first ask, what's the bare minimum function of life? As Schrodinger said, it's to locally reduce entropy. Entropy, in simple terms, is a measure of disorder in a system. The second law of thermodynamics states that entropy in a closed system will always increase over time. Coffee and cream mix, vases break, Humpty Dumpty falls off the wall and doesn't get back together again. Life is a sort of exception in that locally it can resist entropy by maintaining order through metabolism, through growth, through reproduction, and even through competition. To do this, living organisms consume energy from their environment and they use it to build and maintain complex structures while expelling waste and disorder elsewhere. Without constant energy input and entropy management, these living systems, whether they be bacteria or you and me, would dissolve into chaos and cease to function. A recent study suggests that alien life would also need to counteract entropy in similar fashion, leading to universal biological constraints that can help us understand the answer to the Fermi paradox. If alien life forms are subject to the same thermodynamic constraints as life on Earth, they would need to extract energy efficiently and also locally maintain low internal entropy. One way to do this is by eliminating competition to their resource limited environment, killing off or outcompeting rival species that would allow dominant life forms to persist. Once they do so, they could monopolize the energy sources, minimizing chaotic interactions and stabilizing their ecosystems. On a planetary scale, this could manifest itself in a variety of ways. A hyper-intelligent alien species might develop technology to eliminate competitors, perhaps early, by engineering their own weaponry. That could be as simple as a virus or targeting extinction-level events for their competition, allowing them to rapidly increase their territory. If microbial life existed on an alien world, more advanced life might actively work to eradicate competition to prevent it from making unpredictable mutation that could challenge their dominance. Even a planetary biosphere could be shaped by dominant organisms selectively wiping out incompatible life forms, ensuring a controlled, predictable, stable environment that they would thrive in. We see that on Earth. There's no reason to expect it couldn't happen in the heavens as well. And if intelligent extraterrestrials reached a level of sophistication where they could expand beyond their home world, they might apply this logic to interstellar conquest. Rather than coexisting with potential competitors, they might preemptively sterilize habitable planets to prevent rival species from ever emerging, thus leaving vast regions of space in our galaxy. Sterilization took place. This could explain the so-called eerie silence of the cosmos. For example, Streptomyces bacteria produce antibiotics to kill off rival microbes, securing resources for their own growth. Similarly, a cunning creature called Bedella vibrobacteria actively hunts and consumes other bacteria, maintaining their own order at the expense of others, we should say. Most people think of bacteria as simple, mindless organisms. But the revolutionary work of the late physicist Eschel Ben Jacob revealed something far more sophisticated. These microscopic entities aren't passive. They're master strategists, capable of succeeding at their bacteriological games of risk. 
For example, they engage in complex social coordination. They process information remarkably efficiently. They employ sophisticated weapon systems that rival the Pentagon's. And they engage in strategic decision making across vast colonies of billions of warriors. Now, let's look at their cool tools in their arsenal. The Type 6 secretion system is basically a molecular harpoon gun. <laughs> bacteria use it to inject deadly toxins into their enemy. These are bacteria sins, highly specialized weapons that target specifically enemy species vulnerabilities while leaving allies unharmed. The bacterial equivalent of a precision laser-guided missile. Next, look at this cool little creature. This is how bacteria wage war collectively. They don't just blindly attack. Instead, they use sophisticated warfare strategies. Some of these colonies employ divide and conquer tactics that turn enemies against each other and conserve their own precious resources. Others deploy coordinated group attacks with multiple toxin types. Some form defensive structures like Roman legions in days gone by to protect their colonies in a phalanx organizational structure. Bacteria achieve all of this through sophisticated chemical communication networks that allow entire colonies to act as one single, surprisingly coordinated intelligence. Our Pentagon could learn a lot from these little guys, but how does this connect to the Fermi Paradox? After all, the stunning lack of detectable life in our universe is one of the great unsolved mysteries of all time. And what does it have to do with the intense loneliness of the void of interstellar space? Do the mathematical patterns of bacterial warfare, expansion, resource depletion, competition, and collapse have cosmic parallels that can explain the strange silence of our heavens? In 2010, the late physicist Stephen Hawking spoke on the possibility of first contact with alien species and how that might not be what we would hope. He talked about the possibility that an advanced alien species would perhaps become nomads, looking to conquer and colonize whatever planets they could reach. A civilization reading one of the messages could be billions of years ahead of us. If so, they would be vastly more powerful, and they might not see us as any more valuable than we see bacteria. I spoke about the dangers of sending messages to extraterrestrial intelligences, so-called METI, with my colleague, Professor Shelley Wright. She's looking for optical signals that could be produced by distant galactic civilizations. But we might be in great danger, as Hawking showed, that we might be effectively ringing our own dinner bell for the, our galactic overlords to come and devour us. Now, Hawking's warning never stopped a good scientist from searching opportunistically to look for neighbors in the cosmos. And in fact, the SETI Institute was established in the 1980s to search for extraterrestrial signals. And many institutions and observatories, like my friend Shelley, are working worldwide, dedicating their lives to the quest of discovering distant life. And in fact, there have been a few close calls and unexplained phenomena. For example, the WOW signal a strong narrowband radio signal detected on August 15, 1977 using the Big Ear Radio Telescope at Ohio State University. The frequency detected stood out as a promising signal of how extraterrestrials might communicate with one another. But as I showed in a recent video on the WOW signal, recent discoveries have cast doubt on that original claim. 1997 saw the discovery of the Allen Land Hills meteorite, which claimed to possibly harbor microbial life artifacts possibly originating from Mars. Recently, Congress and NASA have commissioned studies to investigate so-called unexplained anomalous phenomena, UAPs. It's kind of a rebranded name for what we used to call UFOs. So far, there haven't been confirmed sightings, but some strange phenomena, whether it be drones in New Jersey recently spotted in late 2024, to the claimed discovery of non-human biologics by Air Force veteran David Grush, or strange sightings of UFO-like objects maneuvering beyond the known laws of physics, there's almost more phenomena that we want to understand than time and scientists that go after them. But so far, no proof has been conclusive. And if life populated the universe, why would it be so subtle or perhaps completely undetectable? Let's return to our humble bacteriological friends. As bacteria grow and spread and break into different cultures, three potent analogies might explain our intergalactic predicament. In the warfare between bacteria, this propensity towards competition and violence has led to an interesting counter strategy, going quiet. When you're being threatened with the bacterial equivalent of being speared, gassed, or poisoned, you might realize that if you can't attack preemptively, the safest move is to either flee or not be detected in the first place. That's why some bacteria can turn off their signal, effectively going into stealth mode, avoiding detection by competitors and by any unknown adversaries like antibodies or human antibiotics. 
This tactic we have to contend with when we do battle during an infection. Bacteria P. aeruginosa, which causes a form of pneumonia, can detect immune system molecules and shut down toxin production in order to avoid being detected. And they, they're so clever, they can resume it again when the coast is clear. Bacteria have many ways to avoid being uncovered by their adversaries and competitors. So it's no surprise that one possible strategy our cosmic equivalents might have is that they've developed a similar type of stealth defense mechanism. While we beam out signals into space and listen carefully for them to be reciprocated, the silence we hear back may not be a lack of civilization's existence, but rather a universe of life that's smart and learn consequences of sometimes the best move is to stay quiet. Sometimes we've even seen bacteria who aren't afraid of their neighbors or even facing external threats, and they aren't going quiet or hiding to avoid detection from potential enemies. Instead, curiously, they still disappear, collapsing from a thriving colony to a petri dish wasteland. In these cases, what happens to our bacterial friends? Who or what causes their vicious destruction? The answer is their own hunger for expansion. This is Myxococcus xanthus, a predatory swarming bacterium that loves to hunt in packs. This bacteria surrounds its prey and secretes enzymes to digest other microbes, like a digestive acid rain that consumes their prey. Unfortunately, if this bacteria gets too overzealous and produces too many digestive enzymes, their rapacious behavior can cause population collapse, destroying the available nutrients that they'd otherwise be happy to dine upon. Like these bacteria, it's possible that our alien civilizations in our galaxy reach a calamity that's a result of their own success run amok. Perhaps most civilizations are eliminated by resource constraints, burnout, and self-destruction before they're ever able to reach a point where they could be achieving a stable equilibrium and develop the resources they need for interstellar travel or even interstellar communications. Perhaps there's countless civilizations blooming in the cosmic awakening, or perhaps these creatures like aliens are overzealous warriors. Bacteria have been observed in both laboratory settings and natural environments to be capable of broad-scale interbacteria competition, leading to many of the innovations we've already discussed. When multiple bacteria come together, the result can be total annihilation. Scientists have observed E. coli strains wipe themselves out when competing with mutant E. coli who produce bacteria toxins. These are chemicals that poison other bacteria if incorrectly deployed, but they can also wipe out the enemy and the ally alike. This is the ultimate in bacteriological friendly fire. Other bacteria conduct extreme chemical warfare in nutrient poor soils, indirectly, literally scorching the earth both for them and their competition. When overcrowded, bacteria like cholera will sense that it needs to exit growth mode and begin destroying itself as a means of population control for the good of the colony as a whole. The predator literally becomes the prey. While this suicidal behavior is helpful in some environments, there are times when this response can get out of control, either due to increasing population density or incorrect interpretations of their chemical signals. In this scenario, a type of runaway cellular suicide is set off, and it can go out of control, eventually wiping out the entire population. We can echo this in our own intelligent civilization throughout history. And in an extreme case, perhaps the abundance of intelligence in the cosmos often encounters a very, very similar fate, with intra and intergalactic expansion leading to a beautiful growth at some levels, and then an equally stunning, spectacular, or even horrific collapse. This microbial warfare concept could scale up to galactic scales. At the interstellar level, it could provide a possible explanation for the Fermi paradox, the apparent lack of intelligent alien civilizations, despite the vastness of our galaxy and the billions of year timescales in which these signals could have reached our shores. If advanced life inherently seeks to eliminate competition to maintain its own entropy balance, to maintain its own entropy reduction, then civilizations might either self-destruct in competition or actively purge potential rivals before they can emerge. Perhaps alien life also follows the brutal bacteriological rule. The first species to achieve interstellar capabilities eliminates all others to maintain dominance. If so, the galaxy isn't silent because it lacks life. It's silent because the winners have eliminated the competition, making sure no one else survives. Arthur C. Clarke once said two possibilities exist. Either we are alone in the universe or we're not, and both possibilities are equally terrifying. But there's a third possibility that's even more chilling. 
The universe is full of civilizations teeming with life and culture. And if so, can those civilizations and our own here on Earth find new possibilities, a new way to achieve stable equilibrium through prudent resource management, productive cooperation strategies, and sustainable competition? Or will they follow the same brutal patterns we see in these Petri dishes? expanding, fighting, burning, and flaming out. To dive deeper into this topic, check out my extended conversation with astrophysicist Adam Frank on the mathematics of alien civilizational collapse. We discussed not only what it means for aliens, but what it could tell us about our own future. 